And I want to uh, invite uh, Nicholas Rydis to the stage. Nicholas is here today representing uh, the Australian Marketing Institute, um, but he's also a, a, a senior academic, having taught at a number of um, New South Wales and international universities in marketing and accounting and business administration. Um, thank you for having me today. So I wear a few hats and I have been teaching for about 17 years. I actually teach across the road uh, and a few other universities. I don't have a script, so I'm going to keep it quite a frank conversation. Today's talk is, I, I'm going to treat you guys like my students. So it's exactly the talk that I talk to my students about of, if you're in education as a young person, what do you need to do when you actually finish? Um, and, and I'm assuming, I had a quick look at your stats, um, you have a, a bit of a broader range of ages than I do, but I think it's, it's very similar. So it's, it's not a talk of what you guys need to do to market yourselves, it's actually what you need to tell your students that, that they need to do considering that the economy is starting to change. So uh, if you can take out your phones, please just make sure they're on silent, but please grab your phones, take them out, you're probably used to this having seen most of your students sitting in the room on a laptop or a phone, so we're actually going to recreate the same environment. And the reason I want you to take out your phone is, from my understanding, everyone's teaching in a very different discipline. Um, I spend most of my time teaching in, in marketing and management. I, I, did a, I did building first at uni. And, and a lot of the lessons I've learned uh, probably was when I went back to uni, I kind of looked at what I should have done as a first-time student that no one actually told me what I should have done. Um, so looking at your stats, you've, you've got quite a range of ages, a range of qualifications, people coming back to study, and it's small on purpose because it, you don't need to read them. But I think one of the questions you need to sit there and think about is ask your students what life stage they're in. And, and it's, you're going to have differences. So for example, for me, I have students who work full-time, who work part-time, who have picked a degree because their parents have pushed them into it and they don't have the passion for it. So there's all these things that come into it and it's, it's very difficult. I, I know you guys have time constraints. Are you guys getting a bit of feedback at all or is it okay? Okay. Um, it's, it's this issue of absolutely soft skills are extremely important and we don't teach them either at university. But I say to my students, what's really important is you guys need to go out there and build them yourselves outside of the classroom. My job in the classroom is to take the knowledge, simplify it, help you understand it, and get you to produce some work so we can actually market. Um, but my outside job is to show them to points of, of contact where they can build those soft skills. And I'll show you some of those today. So, again, please put yourself, you know, imagine you are actually a student in your own room. Um, so, it, it's going to, for me, I, I still find this tough every year I go into the room. I, I try and imagine what it was like, you know, when I went to uni a long, long time ago. Um, and, and times have changed. I think education is changing a lot. Uh, I'll talk a bit about disruption, but the world is changing, but for this, if you can just go back into the mind of your student. Um, okay, so if you've got your phone out, hopefully by now, I'd like you to go to a website, and the website is willrobotstakemyjob.com. So you would now actually be typing in, if you're a student sitting in, for example, your lecture or tutorial or workshop or seminar, what is that student studying? So for example, I'll give you an example. One of my subjects across the road is entrepreneurship. Uh, it kind of encompasses everything. Uh, I do a huge range of marketing subjects. I taught in a school of accounting. Uh, we, I was teaching soft skills for accountants. So is anyone teaching accounting out of curiosity? Okay, so that means, for example, you as a student would be probably going into a job as an accountant. If you type that in, what are some of the numbers that you guys are getting back? Can someone just yell out? For accountants, yep. So artificial intelligence through, through deep machine learning, especially things like IBM Watson, is going to change the way accountants work. Which means that for my students who are doing accounting, I say to them, and, and I actually point my students to this website. I say, this is your first week, first semester. Why are you actually here? And, and it gives them this, this mindset of, well, why am I here? 
I also say to my students, um, I don't know if you have the problem where they, they spend a lot of time on their mobiles or laptops while you're trying to talk to them. Do you find that? Okay, I say to my students, average cost per hour for them to be at university is close to $90 per hour. So I say to them, in the future, you're going to have to go to work and spend $90 of your own money for what you're spending today. And then I link it back to a movie theater. When you go to the movies, you spend $15, $20, you're actually focused, you're there, try and do the same thing. So I, I get this, th this issue of trying to get students back into the room and actually having them communicate with you when, if you look around the room now, can you see exactly what happened? It's exactly what you have. People go, oh, hold on, I'm on the phone, I'm, I'm trying to see what's going on. So I think really driven students don't have this problem. But I think from, from my experience, it's about 20% that are driven and the 80% are just kind of going through the motions of being there. This has worked really well. I've started using this this semester and I say to my students, type in what you're doing. They see the stats, most of them freak out, which is understandable. But then the issue is, I say to them, so okay, if you know this, it means you can actually then go in and fix it. So it's, it's saying to them, you need to do things outside of the classroom because I say to my students, my job is not to tell you the answer. A, I'm not an expert, I don't know it. Um, and B, the answer is out there somewhere that might be right for you, but it could be totally wrong for someone else. So it's, it's pushing them out into different areas. Um, I am part of the AMI, I'm gonna skip through these pretty quickly, but I think certification is extremely important. Um, I joined the Australian Institute of Management, the AMI, uh, and I also joined the building surveyors as a student, not because anyone told me, but just because I thought that's what everyone did. And then when I started talking to my students, I've worked out that most of them don't. Um, and whether that's a, a fault of ours as, as institutes not giving enough value to students, I don't think it is, but students might see it differently. Uh, I think we also need to say to students, you know what, what, whatever you're doing in regards to formal study, whether it's here, university or outside, because don't forget uh, a lot of the American universities, you can now do their courses for free. So MIT, Stanford, Yale, you can log on to the web, you can take their courses for free, um, and you can get a small certificate for part of the course that you've actually done, which looks amazing on a CV. There's MOOCs, so there's, there's a huge massive change in the way students can learn, and I think we also need to embrace that fact as well. But as part of the AMI, we, we have a big focus and push on Certified Practicing Marketer, uh, Australian Institute of Management have the same thing in regards to Certified Practicing Manager. So I say to my students, whatever you're going to do, you're going to learn forever. It's never going to stop. But join your institutes and get involved. So if your students want to learn soft skills, for example, through the Australian, uh, through the Australian Marketing Institute, um, we have internships for students where they come into the, off the head office, they work for free, they learn, and students say, well, what's in it for me? I'm working for free. And I say, well, if you're getting access to the employers that you want to work for, you're actually at the coalface and you might get an introduction through our CEO, which means you get a job while you're still studying. And then you can actually teach and learn those soft skills while the students are actually in a physical work environment. And, and again, it's, I, I think as educators, we, we just don't have time to teach the soft skills. You, you kind of assume that somehow students will work them out in teamwork and group work, et cetera, um, and they'll learn how to present. So I'm going to show you some websites for that as well. That will help you. But if you do have students who want to get involved, um, my door is open. I'm more than happy for students to come in. Um, I'm part of the chair of the, well, I am the chair of the accreditation committee. Um, we're now moving into accrediting the vet sector. We've accredited most of the universities around Australia. And uh, I have student volunteers, which gives them a chance to actually get involved. Um, my biggest issue is the really good student volunteers get snapped up by corporations. That's perfect. That's exactly the problem that I want to have. The, the volunteers that come in and are really proactive, I'm assuming you guys know those students as well when they're in the room. They're the ones who will talk and discuss and, and argue with you and say, well, I read something else. Why do you say that? And, and they're the ones that if you can get those students involved, they'll actually grow the room where you actually get people off the phones. Um, you know, we, I don't know if you guys have to take roles, but we do need to take roles. And I don't really have a problem with people not rocking up. There's occasionally people sitting on Facebook, but I'm like, that's fine. You know, it's, it's the way the world is today. So I'm going to show you a few things that I think will basically help for you as a student 
going into your first career once you've graduated. Um, there's a few different places that we can look at. So I say to my students, when you're, when you're in the room, you need to set some goals specifically for yourself. This is quite difficult. It was, it was easier when I started teaching 17 years ago. It was quite easy, but students would know if I do accounting, I go do a CA or CPA, I go in, I do my technical skill set job, and sitting in front of a computer, and now artificial intelligence, uh, Google's running data analytics, IBM Watson. Those, you don't need people doing that. Those jobs were farmed out to, to cheaper countries for labor anyway, uh, and even that's now being taken over by machines. So it's saying to students, okay, so you're not gonna be doing this, you'll be doing actually something else with this qualification, but where do you want to be? Most students don't set goals. I never did when I first went to uni. I thought, you know, I'll do building. I get everyone I knew was in the building industry. I got out, the industry had collapsed, there was no work. I worked for a year. I went back and did management and marketing. So I think the other important thing is if, if students are passionate about what they do and, they're, and they're, they're, they've actually chosen what they want to do, they will actually come to your classrooms really driven and they switch, you know. So I find, st I teach marketing, I've got a passion for marketing. Students say to me, I never thought about marketing, but maybe we can have a conversation. And, and that's, that's what you want. You want someone who's passionate as a student. So I'm just gonna be mindful of timing. I have got quite a few slides, but can, from your point of view, what makes a good educator? Like you're a student, what would work for you guys in a room? So someone who's passionate? Credible, credible. yep. I think, and, and credible I think is, is really important because I look at it and say to my students, you are paying $100 an hour to be here at uni. You want someone who actually can teach you something from both the corporate world and take the theory and simplify it. And, and, and I think that's where TAFE is really good because it has that, that link back to industry. Um, you know, we were talking about PhDs last night. Universities love PhDs. Students don't care. They have no interest in whether the person is a PhD speaking to them. If you can bring in corporate examples, that's what they want to hear. Um, which also means for us as educators, we need to read up quite a lot. Keep in mind, as a student, whatever you read in two weeks is gone. So unless students actually apply it, they won't remember things, which is really tough for us as an educator, because you're out there, you're talking to students, you're going, here's all this knowledge, here's all this theory, and the students come back three weeks later and ask you the same question. So we need to find ways to have our students engage, and whether that's volunteering with industry, uh, getting involved in, in a few different places that I'll show you, anything that you can do to get your students to actually take the theory and involve it for themselves and turn it into a, I say to my students, be selfish because the chance of you getting a job when you get out of here is about now half and it's going to get worse. So I say to my students, it's your job now to find a job. You look at all the government white papers coming out, most governments are now talking to this to their to their workforce saying we we the capitalist system doesn't work anymore we're not really sure what we're going to do but we don't think you'll have a job you know there's discussions about a universal basic wage from elon musk and and these are the same conversations i have with my students and does it build panic no because smart students go okay that's fine i'll adjust so there's some things to make the life of a student easier um, I know you guys are time poor as educators. I'm also time poor. My students are time poor, especially if you have students who work part-time or full-time and are here also part-time, full-time, and they're juggling all these other things. If you look at the stats, you've got a lot of people coming back in for education. Dragon Dictate, you talk, it types, and it's about 99.9% .9 accurate. I, I cannot type. I'm still about 20 words a minute, and I use Dragon Dictate to actually mark. Is anyone using Turnitin to mark software? Okay, link straight into Turnitin. I can get through marking. I'm a beast in the way I mark. So to, to give you an idea, my average semester is 30 contact hours face to face, and I can do that with my eyes closed. I did 40 one semester, that was a bit much. But think of the marking that comes with 40 face to face tutorial workshops. So these are not lectures, these are 40 individual subjects, range of subjects, range of universities, and it's fine. Um, so, I use this, it will, help, it will help your students get through the workload. Do they need to pay for it? Yes. Is it reasonably priced? I think it is. So, and they have students discount as well. 
Um, statistically, 1% of my students go and buy this, and then they think, I should have bought it sooner. Um, Grammarly, so I, I know, for example, you guys have to mark stuff, and the problem of trying to mark poor grammar is it slows you down. So I say to my students, if you want higher marks, use Grammarly. There, there's a range of software out there to make the lives of a student easier. We just need to point them in the right way. This also works quite well because it makes your life easier for marking. Um, textbooks, I know students don't like reading them, they don't like buying them, but I say to all my students, you, you need to set the foundation knowledge, and one of the things that I'll, in the classroom is I'll actually pull pages out from textbooks and say, on page X, here is this model, grab your book, and then people sit there and go, oh, I should have bought one. And you slowly get people to actually buy textbooks. Um, most of the knowledge is available online, but I think you still need to have someone who's got the basic foundation knowledge in there. So this is what I'm going to run through quite quick. I'm here for the whole day, so I'm more than happy to have detailed conversations with you. So as a student, you need to think about your profile on, on the internet. The, the internet is archived. Whatever you do today is going to be there forever. Privacy settings do not exist. There are companies in the US that basically download Facebook on a daily basis. You go for a job, your profile is then actually sold to this company, and they can work out what you like. So you need a mixture of uh, pushing through other people's content, uh, content from you, and then something that gives you a bit of a personality so you actually have a brand. Because in essence, as a student, you are actually starting to brand yourself. Um, a blog is a great idea, so WordPress, nice, simple, easy to use, um, will make the blogging process quite easy. Be very mindful what you blog about, obviously nothing too topical, again because you can see what happens when people say something wrong, it can spread very quickly. But as a student, especially if you're a, a first year, first semester, this is when you need to start. It's too late for students to sit there and think, right, I'm near the end of graduation. This is when I should now start marking. It's too late. The smart students have already got jobs, and, and now that, you know, you're going through the graduate recruitment process where there's just thousands of CVs. Um, get a Gmail account. I have a Yahoo account. No one uses Yahoo. The, the, the infrastructure behind Yahoo is falling apart. A quarter of the world is roughly on Gmail. Get a Gmail account as a student. Secure your name as well. Uh, set up Google Alerts on your name so you can actually see what, a, what someone is saying about you. Has a fellow student said something about you on Facebook that could actually damage your reputation? Um, so, th and this is really important. Also, as a student, track the companies that you want to work for so when you meet someone, for example, if someone's from PwC, you've got a conversation of, oh, I saw that you had this, et cetera, et cetera. I can prove my worth. I can add value to you quickly. And the person might go, oh, this is fantastic. You know about us. What are you doing when you're finishing? Instagram is fine. Again, build your profile on Instagram. Think about always giving value. And, and it, you know, it's this, you've got to be mindful of humble bragging as, as, as a young person. But try and think of what can you do to give value back to society, to companies, to institutes that you might be involved with, to your educational system as well. Um, be extremely careful what you put on Facebook. There is no such thing as privacy. Facebook knows you better than what you know yourself. Privacy settings mean nothing at all. So I say to my students, okay, bring up your Facebook profile on your laptop, turn it on, give it to the person next to you, and swap. And that there's this look of horror in everyone's face. I'm like, so, what you've basically done is panicked because you've thought there's something bad on your profile. Guess what? A recruiter has already looked at that and possibly, the stats are roughly about 30% of the people don't get jobs because of what's on their social media profiles. And then there's a huge range of stats in regards to people now losing their jobs because of the silly things that they say and do. So again, as a student, you need to be mindful of what you're saying now for your whole career because it's there forever. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, just out of curiosity, just put your hand up if you are on LinkedIn. Excellent. Ask your students. Most of your students are not on LinkedIn. So in one of my classes for entrepreneurship, where my students are building fake companies, I actually get them on LinkedIn and they build a profile straight away. So I say to them, right, now that you've got your profile, hit your Yahoo, your Gmail, your Outlooks accounts, start spreading your, your brand out there 
and get into a conversation. If, you're, if you guys want to add me as well, I'm more than happy to add. So I think LinkedIn is great. It's a way of giving back to community. And, and again, you can publish articles. Um, the, the topic of today's talk, I put on LinkedIn to get feedback from people to see what they liked and what they didn't like. So you can say to students, if companies are using LinkedIn, why are you not there? And it's free. I also say to students, own your own name. So there's a website ca called godaddy.com. It's probably one of the worst names in history. Uh, but it's the cheapest net registering company uh, around. It's also the biggest. You can buy your .com as your personal brand name for about $12 a year, US. So it means you own your name. If something goes wrong and someone has somehow your brand is, is damaged as an individual, you can go in and actually fix that through your own website by then using Google AdWords and keywords and analytics to actually build your profile up and put the bad stuff down deep, deep in Google where no one can find it. If you don't own your name though, it's very difficult to do this and it's really cheap. Um, and you can own different, you, you can own whatever you like, but I think it's important as a student to actually have your name. Uh, I say to my students, go on to TED. I'm assuming most people have had, heard of TED Talks. Uh, TED Talks are good because you can get a, a range of discussions for a student going on to anything. And again, so if I'm a student and I'm at a networking event, I can look at TED, I can sit there and go, Ken Robinson's do, skill, do schools kill creativity, and I can talk to then, say, an educator. I can then look at things like a 12-year-old app developer. So there's a range of things, and I say to my students, start first with your passion. So if your passion is food or clothing or puppies, whatever, um, start there, get into TED, have a look around, then move into what you're studying, but make sure you can kind of put these things into your mind so when you meet someone, you can go, oh, it's interesting, I saw a talk on TED and they said this, what do you think? And it builds this conversation. Um, I say to my students also, uh, again now, own your name on YouTube because if you don't own your name, someone else may actually own your name for you and then it's really, there's, there's no copyright on names. You can't ask YouTube to pull someone's name down because it's yours. You're not a brand in that way, but you need to own it. Uh, I say to my students, go and get business cards from Vistaprint. Extremely cheap. Uh, you can actually get them for free with cheap shipping. The US company produces higher quality stock than the Australian company, but I say to my students, have a business card. You're out somewhere, you meet someone, you can hand something physical over, which is extremely important when you're talking to, to SMEs who are run by a different generation. They're not digital. They want something to hold. It also means most students don't have business cards. And, and if you do, it just puts you ahead of, of anyone else. So again, quite a cheap solution. I normally don't wear a suit. Um, and, and I say to my students, look, part of, of going in for the job interview process is actually working out the culture of the corporation. Work out, set your goals, work out what you want, where you want to work, start dressing like that so when you meet people, they assume you're actually part of the industry as well. So if it's a suit or if it's the, the casual workplace of, you know, say IT, you actually need to dress for that. Um, some of my students have issues of, they might not live in the best suburb. And because you have computers that do most of the profile matching for CVs, I say to them, right, so it's easy, get around it, get a GPO box. No one needs to know where you live. And it removes any kind of issues then of a recruiter saying, but you live really far away and we're concerned that it might take you three hours to get to work. That shouldn't be an issue. If I've got the skill set to get the job, it shouldn't really matter where I live. If it does for some people, the way around it is a GPO box. You remove all physical evidence of where you live. No one can make that judgment call. Um, and it's something that I've, that I've learned um, when I first came to Sydney. Get to a meetup. So if you're a student and you need to build a skill set of financial aspects, soft skills, EQ, all these things that we don't teach, say, in university, if you organise a meetup group around your passion. So I'll give you an example. Um, I've, I've got into, you saw the Oculus Rift. Um, I bought one. I love tech. And I'm, I've started getting into cryptocurrency trading. And there's just tons of meetups around this thing. So I say to my students, right, if you've got a passion for rock climbing, organize a meetup around rock climbing, get to know some other people, but when you go to an employer, you can say to people, you know what, I had to organize, I had to do marketing, I had to do management, I had to look after staff and people and think about insurance and all these other things that come along with it. So I build my, I build my skill set 
by taking my knowledge that I'm learning and actually applying it. It also means that someone can actually go to the internet and see that the person has actually done it. It's proof that as a student, I've done this. It's not me saying to you, I was at university and I did teamwork in a group. That doesn't mean anything to a recruiter. This is what matters. Or I don't know if you guys have, say, clubs at TAFE that are run by students. Do you guys have clubs at TAFE that are run by students? Okay. So I think as a system, that's also quite important. At, at UTS, one of my students loved photography, set up a photography club, and that's actually how they got their job. Because it was all those passions involved where people went, great, you can actually now walk the talk. Um, there's a great website called Mind Tools that I point my students to. So this helps them with, with EQ or EI, depending which way you look at it. Um, quite a few free resources as well. And, and it's, it's basically, I, I know that out of all these things that I say to my students, some look at it and some just glance over it. And that's okay, but I think as long as we say to our students, this is where you can go, it's up to you. In regards to what's happening in the world in the future, there's a great talk on TED by Ian Golden. And I can tell you, no one actually knows what's going to happen to the world. They know it's not working, but no one actually knows what's going to happen. Uh, artificial intelligence is definitely coming and there will be a change in the way we work, but no one actually knows what it's going to be. So I say to my students, you need to have hands in many pies. You need to be studying and working and, and studying online and, and doing something else continually. So I say to my students, you know, think about getting on websites like Upwork, where you can actually farm out your labour per hour. There's a great one in Australia called Airtasker. So I put business into Airtasker and there's a range of different things. So if I'm a student, I can go to Airtasker and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is my skill set. Give me money, build my skills, and I can go into an employer actually saying specifically, I have skills that can actually add value to you. Um, volunteer at TEDx. So if you can get your students to volunteer at TEDx, they will realistically be stuck pointing people in the right direction, but the connections they make and the fact that it looks great on their CV is really what you're trying to do. Because a lot of CVs now go through a computer system and you're trying to make sure that a computer will actually pick up your CV. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, uh, I know UTS has the hatchery, there's an entrepreneurship school coming up here. Most students will basically have to have kind of a hustle or a side gig on the side. Ty is quite good, um, Sydney based. I say my entrepreneurship class, we have a prize of a few thousand. They have a prize of 1.5 million US dollars. And I say to my students, 1.5 million US dollars is not bad as a student. It's still tough to get them to join. But I think all we can do is point them in the right direction. If you have students who don't like speaking in, in front of a stage, Toastmasters. It's free. So again, it's, it's pointing them in the right direction. Do they go? Some will. But I think as long as we can tell them what's out there, that will help. There, I, f I found this last night. There is actually a workbook online where as a student you can actually go in and it helps you brand yourself, which I thought was fantastic. And it's totally free. So again, if you're a student, it's building your personal brand. It's set up by PwC. It's quite simple and easy to use. And again, you actually get something out of it that you can put onto your CV. Um, volunteer, so again, through the AMI, we're always seeking volunteers. I say to my students, volunteer. Um, all our directors for the AMI are unpaid. We are all volunteers. So when students say to me, I don't want to work for free, I turn around and go, I do. Simple as that. So it means that they can actually get out there into the community. Um, if you do want to contact me, um, I'm, I'm pretty bad on email, but you're more than welcome to give me a phone call. I literally live down the road. I'm happy to chat, or I'm actually across the road. Um, I think I've probably done my timing for questions, but uh, thank you for having me today.